Hey everyone, in part two of this video, I'm going to go over my top water collection, my jigs and bladed baits, and my panfish collection. Go ahead and get started with my top water collection here. Of course, there's going to be a lot of whopper poppers in here. This is the size 130. This is the loon color. It has the yellow head on it. I uh, don't use this size, never used the 130 size yet. I'll save that for maybe if I ever go uh, musky fishing. Maybe some uh, bigger lakes or something, but so far I haven't had the opportunity to use that one yet. Now this is the one size 110, another loon color. I do, do use this from time to time does pretty good for uh, large mouth, small mouth. Again, Loon's probably my favorite color, so I have probably about three of them. I'll lay it underneath the size 130 so you can see the size differences there. Next one's going to be another size 110. This is the bone color. I've used this one a couple times. But not a whole lot. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of scratches on it or anything. This is the first Whopper Plopper that I ever got. It's a size 90 and uh, probably my favorite size to throw. I uh, throw this a lot on the river. It's pretty much usually the only place I throw these Whopper Ploppers is on the river. But uh, this is a good size for a smallmouth. As you can see, it's uh, been used a lot. Still kicking it. I've had to uh, change the hooks before. This thing right here has caught me hundreds and hundreds of fish. I'll lay that underneath. So you got the 130 on top, 110 in the middle, and size 90 on the bottom. I believe the one on top is a Larry Dahlberg version. That's why it has the yellow on it. Next whopper plopper I got is going to be another size 90. I do use this one a lot also. This is called the monkey butt color. This is also the one that I hooked myself in the leg with. Next one I got is going to be a size 75. This is the black chrome color. And uh, has a little bit uh, shorter profile, a little bit thicker of a profile. I think it actually even weighs just a little bit more than the size 90. But it also does just as good as the size 90 also. You can see the size comparisons now of all the different versions. Now they did just come out with a size 60 Whopper Plopper. And I have one of those that's on its way. See the, the difference in the shape between the size 90 and the size 75? Next top water bait I have is going to be a one knocker spook. It's from Head On. It's a pretty nice sized lure. Right, just a little bit bigger than my size 110 Whopper Plopper. It's a real easy to walk top water bait. This one's going to be a Super Spook Junior. This is the saltwater version. Got the single hook on the back. And this one is going to be called the Zara Puppy. I believe it's another spook type uh, lure. It's made from the same company. It's a little bit smaller than the Super Spook Junior. So we got the one knocker on top, the Super Spook Junior in the middle, and the Zara Puppy on the bottom. Just for size reference. It's going to be the only buzz bait that I own. I believe it's uh, made by Booyah. I've only used it a couple times. I've never caught a fish on it yet. Seems like a pretty big buzz bait. But I like to try and get a, a smaller one, I think. Nice little compartment. I just got a bunch of little cheap poppers here. I don't really throw them too much. Usually when I throw top water, I just stick with the Whopper Popper probably 95% of the time. Little hula popper down there. Found this one right here and just touched it up a little bit. 
As far as frogs go, I got this uh, Lunker Hunt Realistic Frog. This one's going to be a half ounce popping frog. I like these because of the realistic legs they got on them. I also have a regular frog. Same kind, Lunker Hunt Realistic Frog. And I also got the pocket frog version. This is a quarter ounce. This is actually the only frog I've ever caught a fish on. I think maybe one or two smallies and a handful of rock bass. But frog fishing ain't something I do a whole lot of. And I actually found this one last year. This is a, a booyah pad crasher, I believe. So I sharpened the hooks up a little bit and tried to bend them upward a little bit. So I'm looking forward to trying that out this year. And as you can see, I got a couple generic ones in there. Leopard and then a brown one. Probably won't ever use those again. So that's my top water collection. Instead, I mainly use uh, top water on the rivers pretty much. Once in a while, I'll throw a, a frog on a pond or a lake. The reason for that is I'm usually not out early enough or late enough for uh, when top water is really biting when I'm out fishing the ponds or the lakes. But the river pretty much is shallow enough and there's a lot of shaded spots where I'm able to throw top water at all times during the day. I got my uh, jigs and bladed bait box here. Go ahead and open that up. This will include my finesse jigs, football jigs, flipping jigs, my uh, chatter baits, my spinner baits. I have uh, one spoon, uh, an inline spinner, and I also have an underspin in there somewhere. Got everything labeled with a label maker. As you can see, everything's pretty much organized by weight. A couple of them have uh, trailers on them already. Those are the ones I usually uh, grab first. I have a couple of these KVD finesse spinner baits here. This is another one, same kind. This one has a trailer hook on it. This one has a Kitek with a tail dipped in some uh, glow dip. I believe it's double painted willow blades. And I have a couple of these cheap dollar Walmart spinner baits. And I've caught quite a few fish with them. I like to throw them from the bank when uh, there's a high chance of me losing a bait or something. But they'll catch you some fish. Have this uh, Cool Baits Underspin. That was uh, recommended by Tactical Bassin. Here's uh, another inline spinner that was recommended by Tactical Bassin. We get the name of it right now though. Um, this one I found last year. And I got a couple little spoons down there that I never use. So that's pretty much it for that. I got a few different sizes, chatter baits, a uh, bunch of different colors, lots of different colors of uh, jigs here. Some have rattles in it. Favorite ones, probably the finesse jigs, fourth ounce. So I really don't deal with too big of a fish. Okay, next thing I wanna show you is my panfish box. First, I'm gonna show you a couple baits that I like to use. This is uh these are one inch gulp minnows. This is a uh, shad color. 
and these are one inch gaunt minnow chartreuse color that's uh, use those probably more than anything use those to fish for crappie bluegill perch and uh, big catfish even like them for some reason and these are gulp little imitation maggots here use those to catch uh, bait fish bluegills whatnot and I'll go ahead and open up my panfish box here see so I got a couple crappie lures down in here Got some uh, pre-rigged jig heads here for panfish. Some uh, different color ones. Got some uh, little panfish spinner baits. I'm not even sure what these little things are called. Got some uh, beetle spinners. A couple different sizes of those. Got some uh, rooster tails couple different colors and sizes down in there extra hooks and uh, split shots got some floating jig heads now those are pretty good for when I use uh, Carolina rigs and fish for walleye some uh, 16th ounce crappie jig heads I believe they're made by big bites they're uh, 16th ounce jig heads those are usually what I uh, put my one inch gulp minnows on I uh, got a compartment of little small crankbaits here for panfish. Um, some spoons I never use. Little compartment of miscellaneous stuff. Some pre-rigged stuff. Some bobbers. Some plastic. That's just a quick overview of my panfish box. I really don't do a bunch of panfishing. But I do love to eat some crappie once in a while. Okay, that's it for part two of this video. Part 3 is going to be coming up next and in that I'll be going through some of my terminal tackle and all my plastic baits. And uh, as usual, thanks for watching everybody.